Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Everyone's favorite life coach and everyone's, you know, everybody's YouTube darling. If you want my opinion. damaged people and why they do the things that they do so what is a damaged person damaged people come in all types forms uh, you can become damaged as a child as an adolescent as a teenager uh, uh, as an adult um, struggles that we go through you know if we have a choice in whether we are damaged and want to stay that way or if you want the road to healing so i don't consider myself a damaged person um i think that i've had several things happen to me in my life where yes i could say oh my god i'm a damaged person i've been through uh you know the ringer when it comes to you know having a lot of deaths around me I, i've had i've suffered with bell's palsy if you don't know what that was i had that for nine months where i woke up and half of my face was paralyzed and um you know that changed my life Damaged people, um, you can come from nothing and have resentment with that. I have a cousin that is very resentful of where she came from and how she had nothing. And she's got these entitlement issues and it's like, oh my God. And like, she likes to display, put on a show that she's something that she's not. It's very awkward and on very, very uncomfortable to watch. Um, you know, a person that's damaged, so damaged that they can't be honest with themselves. They can't say, you know what? Fuck you. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry because of this. I'm angry because someone in my family died and I can't get over it. I'm angry because a boyfriend broke up with me I'm angry that my husband cheated on me and left me and my four kids for his secretary okay you know I paid for my education and I'm not ashamed of that and I don't hold that as some sort of resentment towards parents my my father died when I was uh, 24 um, you know I think, was I 24? It was in 2002. It was after September 11th. My, I did not say my husband, my father died in September 11th. It was after, it was the February in 2002. And, you know, being a New Yorker, he, he, he definitely died with a broken heart over that. You know, was my father a damaged person? I can say yes. Was my mother? Yes. Damaged people. I have people in my family that are damaged. And my father, you know, lived with a lot of guilt. You know, my, my father was very handsome. My father, you know, 
was not very fair to the woman that he loved, which was my mother. My mother gave him a second chance and the product of that was this. I oh please, boy, here we go happens. again. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, sorry. I can't listen to another one either. What's the difference between happiness and joy? That's what we're going to talk about. Happiness. All right, so I just got a new client. A multimillionaire. And it's, it was shocking. Who's that? All right, so I just got a text. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, it's a temporary joy. A temporary happiness. Joy is different, and that is what I'm trying to explain. Happiness was, I just wore a George Michael video. I, you know, I had a great dinner tonight. Happiness. That was a happy moment. I had a great dessert. Happy. It was a happy moment. Happiness. It's a temporary thing. It's like, you got the job. Yes! You get a $100 super chat or you get, you know, a nice big present or a birthday party. You run into someone at the supermarket you haven't seen ages. It's a happiness. So when someone comes to me and says, are you happy? I don't like that question. What are you talking about? Am I happy? It's a very broad question. Usual, if someone asked me right now and said, hey, Marissa, are you happy? I'd be like, I'm all right. It's impossible to be happy all the time. If you're happy all the time, then, hey, good on you. I don't, I personally don't think that it's possible for anybody to be happy every moment, every day, blah, 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 blah. And then I go on Facebook, and I hate going on Facebook now. And I see these friends of mine, and I see it on Instagram, hashtag living my best life. And I'm like, really? You're living your best life? Is that the best you can do? And I'm looking at these pictures that they're attaching, and okay, you're at a restaurant, and you're holding up a glass, and you got your makeup on, and you're posing. Living my best life. That's living your best life? telling people this especially I know I know you I know that you photoshopped the crap out of your picture okay like those little apps with the makeup and the uh, what do they call the snapchat apps where it makes you look like you're completely flawless I don't I don't do that uh, my friends love those things it's annoying as hell living my best life and I got a glass uh, and a pretty dress on. That's your best freaking life. To Photoshop a picture, put it on your social media where you want to expel the most positive and what you believe is the part where you say I'm so happy. Well, my question to you is, who are you trying to convince, us or yourself? We're supposed to put our best moments on Facebook? But people thought that I was that I needed someone to talk to, that I was depressed, blah 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 blah. blah. But I wasn't going to get into the personal conversation 
about this person's life that I am working with. And I'm not sure how I can help this person because their problem cannot be fixed with money. It can't be fixed with an attorney, nothing. Not even an act of God. And to hear a person talk about what the rest of their life is going to be like and that they don't think that things are going to get better for them made me so I mean I was just to see someone that hurt to hear it over the phone a person with more money than anyone I know, you know, can't fix this problem, no matter what. It breaks my heart. A little, and my husband knows about it, and said, my God, I am so glad that you are there for this person, but obviously, the person is calling, because you are the only person that this person feels that is left for them the only one that'll listen the only ones that and he says everyone's tired of listening to me People telling me get over it no damaged let's not be damaged this thing happened to you these things happen to you you're one circle around the earth and then Come from dust, and we go back to dust. Dust, dust in the wind. You get what I'm saying? No, I don't believe that the rest of your life should be wasted. I don't want you to fear death. Like, I don't fear death. But worse than that is the fear of living. Screw that. All right, so... You have to work really hard for what I have. And my husband had said to me a few weeks ago at dinner, and he goes, I think that people think that things come easy for you. That's what I think. I'm like, God, if they only knew. And he goes, he goes, well, Morris, you know, you know that, and I know that. He goes, but they don't. He goes, in a way, he goes, you know, your patrons and stuff, these women are getting to really, really know you. He goes, I, I can't imagine having a talent to where people are interested in my personal life and my past. He goes, and these are hundreds and thousands of people. He goes, you have that gift. He goes, Marissa, he goes, I can do anything. Everybody knows I can do everything. He goes, I can't do what you do. I go, well, that's great, Adrian, because I can't do what you do. I can't, I can't speak all those languages. I don't have the energy that he has. I don't have that. My husband is not a broken person. You know? Husband's, you know, works very hard, keeps to himself, and he will... He likes the challenge and he rejects failure and I find that to be an amazing quality. Bothers me about my husband is that he busts his ass for a job that might replace him in a couple of days. That bothers me. But thank God my husband wakes up to a job that he loves and he wakes up to a wife that he loves and is so proud to be the father of our child you know me and my husband are very you know 
right there when it comes to Jake. I mean, like, 50-50, we meet at 100%. Jake, such a blessing of a child. I know a lot of guys, I know a lot of guys, a lot of you guys have seen, like, Jake pop on. You might not see Jake too much because my husband is starting to put his little foot down. Um, told me in, at that restaurant, he said, I never wanted this for you. I never wanted you to have, you know, your YouTube channel start to tank because you have all this quote drama and quote, you know, just negativity, negative people around you. He goes, that's, and he goes, he said, I never wanted that for you. He goes, you are so talented. He goes, you have such a connection with these people. He goes, I guarantee you, all these people would love one-on-one -on -one time with you. He goes, and they would absolutely adore you. He goes, they don't know you like I do. He goes, all my friends adore you. People I work with, they love your wife. Every time they have a work thing, they always say, bring your wife, we love her. <laughs> oh, you see this guy? See this guy? Number one bullshit guy. He do the wee woo wee woo. People that are never satisfied. You don't want to be a person that's never satisfied. But you want to be a person that is addicted in a positive way to self-growth. Self-growth, in my opinion, I'm gonna be a better wife tomorrow, I'm gonna be a better friend tomorrow, I'm gonna be a better mother tomorrow, I'm gonna pick a place that I wanna visit, I'm going to do my due diligence to be a better life coach, I'm going to listen to public speakers, motivational speakers, and hear what they have to say, think about it. Uh, you know, perceive it. Because you know what? You can learn a lot from people and the hardships that they have gone through. And you can listen to inspirational stories but most of the good stuff comes from realizing that the humanity comes in and you see other people suffering and you have that empathy in you to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you have not put me through this. But I can see through this person's eyes what it has done to them, how this has hurt them. Lord, can you give me some, you know, moment in respect where I have some sort of wisdom or knowledge or just something, just put it in me, put it in me, like just let me feel it, let it come out of, you know, the depth of my soul and just let it come through my voice only happened once in a life coaching call where I was just like there you go and I don't know it was one of the toughest life coaching calls I'll never remember I'll never forget about it because I remember I like fell over onto the um the wall you're not gonna be okay being an angry person you're not gonna be okay being jealous of other people comparing your life to other people you're put on this earth for a purpose you have to do your work you know how they say you're still here because your work is not done yeah your work is not done because you're here for a purpose and you haven't found it yet you haven't found your purpose yet you will you will, and when you find it, you will. And then you will no longer say, I'm a broken person. Hell no. 
I took that brokenness and I swept it up and I put it in the trash where it belonged. It's up to you. Stay miserable? Stay angry? For what? So you can get wrinkles? No. So you can just be unpleasant to be around? You know, when you're an unpleasant person, when you're angry, when you're complaining, when you're just ugh, unsavory to the people around you, people are looking at you like this. I deserve better friends than this. Yeah, I, I get it. Like, I'll get it. Like, I, I don't want to be around yucky people either. So, that was the lesson for today. I mean, we're talking about the difference between broken people and some people that may hey, even be just a little lost in the trenches, but it's only temporarily. Just don't own that label. And don't ever make a fool out of yourself and go on your Facebook and be like, I'm so happy. I love, my this is the big one. I love my life. Everyone's rolling their eyes when you say, and every, it's funny because everybody talks about this. I love my life. I remember I saw someone in my family put, I just love my life so much, boom. Within a week, found out her husband had a girlfriend for two years. Boom, that was over. Put it out into the universe. The other one, my husband would never cheat on me. Boom, it happens. It's a curse. Your words are, remember your words. Universe all over, it's picking it up. What you expel out there? Well, this is not possible. This ain't gonna happen. No. That's not how you treat the universe. You don't tell the universe what the future has for you. That's not how it goes. That's not how it goes, people. It does not go that way. It does not. You're not very good at trying to kill time. I'm not good at it? Adrian says I'm not very good at it. Guess I'm not cut out for it.